Hi there. Kaiwitz kindly sent me their soldering station, COD 936, for review. I'm not paid for the video, but since I'm allowed to keep the soldering station, I marked this video as a promotion. From previous reviews, you know that this doesn't stop me from sharing all my findings with you. In the box we have a manual, a base plate, a bit of lead-free solder, 0.8mm diameter, but Kaiwitz sent me separately some more with different thicknesses, 0.6mm and 1.2mm. One of those cleaning things, a bag with hardware, obviously some assembly will be required, a bag with five tips, some flexible sticks obviously to hold things while soldering, a bag with a magnifier lens, and finally, the station itself. A stand for the soldering iron and the soldering iron itself. The instructions say to fix the arms onto the base plate, give it some feed and then rest the station on it. To that intent, they delivered a lot of screws and other hardware, so let's get started. The helping hand arms are fixed with a screw to the base plate. There are no tooth washers securing these so they unscrew themselves all the time during use. Even tightening with quite a bit of force helps only momentarily. I will add my own washers to this later. Each of the four feet is fixed with a screw through the base plate and secured with a black nut from the other side. No issue with that method. All four feet are installed, adding the base station. I don't really like putting the station on there. The station is obviously a counterweight to keep the plate with the arms from moving around, but I don't like soldering over the station. It has vents so components, wires or solder droplets could fall inside. I will remove the station from this plate when I do real soldering. I try to put the magnifier lens on which seem to be real glass, but the screw thread just doesn't work. Whatever I try, the thread does not catch. But there seems nothing wrong with the thread. I took the lens arm out of the base plate to make working on this easier, but no success. I then unscrewed one of the padded alligator clips and tried to screw the lens on that arm, but again unsuccessfully. But putting the alligator clip on the arm for the lens works, so the problem is with the lens, not the arm. In the end I kind of jammed it in there and it seems to hold even though it's hardly screwed in. When it falls out, which it surely will, I plan on measuring the thread size. The magnifier lens is protected by a foil and it seems to be real glass. It's actually quite nice to use. And that alligator clip I took off to test the lens? Well, it's now wobbly despite me tightening as far as it goes. It's not a major problem, just a bit annoying. Let's have a look at the iron itself. It's pretty light and it has a very soft cable, but I doubt it's silicon. The plug is a standard 5 pin, often used for audio. Before turning anything mains powered on for the first time, it's a good rule to test if ground is properly connected and to test this on a Kaiweed soldering station, what better way than using a Kaiweed HT-118E, the 20,000 count version of the HT-118A. Very good, the earth pin of the UK plug is connected all the way to the iron. That's how it should be. I selected a tip for the iron from the set delivered with the station, but was pleasantly surprised because after removing the transport protection I found there was already one installed. It's a needle sharp conical tip, so in total you get 6 tips, 5 in a bag and one already installed. I look at what the manual describes as copper wire cleaner. Hmm, is copper magnetic? I don't think so. Also the question where to put it. The compartment in the stand is too small. It interferes with the iron sitting securely in the stand and I don't think it's a good idea to permanently embed the iron tip in the copper wire. I decided to keep it somewhere else. The five spare tips that come with it are listed in the manual. The one that comes installed is the bottom one with a very fine conical tip. You have a wide range on offer here which is commendable. To be true, none of these are tips I would choose, but that's a matter of personal preference. The closest shape I would select for everyday, mostly non-SMD work is the second from the top, 
but that one is still a bit on the large side. I have added my measurements on the Kaiwitz tips if you are looking for alternatives. I tried some eBay generic ones and had 4.5mm inner diameter and 6.5mm outer diameter. They are slightly larger but fit and get hot enough to melt solder, but I have not done any further tests. The moment all your sponge affectionados have been waiting for. But the sponge is so thin its expansion is rather undramatic. For some reason the manual says to start the soldering station set to 200 degrees celsius and then move to the desired temperature. I do it here once but I normally leave my stations on the last setting and just turn them on or off. I hope the Kaiwit station can handle that too. I plugged it into my power monitor when I turn on the station it goes to about 120 watts and the light is steady on but quickly settles to just cycling between 6 watts and 40 odd watts and the LED blinking, meaning it reached the temperature. Upping the setting to 350 degrees and it goes back to full power mode for a bit before it settles back to sustain mode. The bright LED makes it very easy to see when the heater is on. With the soldering iron hot, a quick test if its cord is heat resistant silicon or not. Well, clearly not. There's melted plastic on the tip and a visible notch in the cord. To get a more detailed picture of how the Kaiweed station is performing, I decided to use my AC monitor to record its power draw. I leave a link to the video where I built this very useful device. The station is set to 350 degrees Celsius and I turn power on with a dial on that setting without going first to 200 degrees Celsius as the manual suggests. It can handle that just fine as I would expect. The AC monitor recorded a lot of data but here I just show the power as the blue trace and the power factor in red. When turned on the power jumps to 120 watts. Considering the station is specified at 60 watts that's interesting. The power factor is nearly 1 meaning it's all going into the heating element acting like a resistor. As the iron heats up the power decreases and once it had reached temperature the power drops to less than 6 watts. At the same time the power factor drops. Then the station cycles the power on and off between 6 and 40 watts to maintain the temperature. Checking the timeline in the graph it took the Kaiwitz station just 30 seconds to get the iron from cold to 350 degrees celsius. For comparison here is the same test with my Hakko soldering station specified at 70 watts. The behavior is pretty much the same including the peak power being twice the specified power. Interestingly the Hakko has this little bump here for 5 seconds probably while its built in microcontroller boots up. Because of that the Hakko takes 5 seconds longer than the Kaiweeds from power on to temperature. And speaking of temperature, I wanted to test the accuracy of the Kaiweeds but I don't have one of these special devices to test soldering irons, so I improvised. I used the K-type thermocouple rated for 450 degrees Celsius max and covered it with a small piece of aluminium. Some of the temperature will be conducted into the environment, especially into the wood, but I'm only looking for comparison, not absolute values. It takes quite a while, so this is accelerated, but the Hakko set to 350 degrees Celsius ends up registering at about 270 degrees Celsius. Repeating the same test with the Kaiweeds set to 350 degrees Celsius and it's struggling. About 213 degrees Celsius is what it reaches. Time to do a cull. The Kaiweed station has a cull pot reachable through the hole in the front plate. I moved it from one end to the other end to get an idea of the original setting. It turned out to be about 3 quarters to the right already and I moved it all the way to the right. Repeating the same test as before and yes with slightly more than 270 it's now a bit higher than the Hakko so a little turn back on the cull will be needed but given the crude method I decided to proceed for now. Time to have a look inside. There are 4 self tapper screws at the bottom. Of note I did not discover any ULCE or VDE approval markings on the station which makes me rather curious about the insides. It does come apart, by the way the housing is all plastic although it may look as if it's metal, only the front plate is steel. There are no surprises, a fairly big main transformer, a power switch and a small PCB mounted to the front plate. The ground lead is connected to the transformer body. 
A second ground wire goes from the opposite side of the transformer body to the PCB and through that to the soldering iron. The switch sits on a mini PCB which has a fuse soldered in. The fuse is rated slow 1 amp 250 volts and the switch is rated for up to 6 amps at 250 volts AC. I don't like how the ground leads are connected. The transformer body is lacquered, so connectivity to the iron part and to the screw opposite relies on that the screws make contact somehow inside the body. Not good, especially since there's a blank piece of metal provided. It looks as if somebody simply put the incoming ground lead on the wrong screw. And speaking of wrong, it turns out that both the switch and the fuse are in the neutral connection instead of the hot or live one. In other words, the mains leads are swapped too. Another thing is that the steel front plate is not connected to ground at all. Not good either. Also you can see here that the socket for connecting the soldering iron is glued in. This makes it very hard to remove the PCB and reinstall it later, so I have not tried that. Hence, all I can show is this side of the PCB. Of note, the low voltage AC inputs from the transformer are the two red wires. The AC is half rectified, but it uses two diodes effectively in series. All that does is reduce the voltage a little. The DC is then smoothed somewhat with a capacitor on the other side. The chip you see is an LM358, a dual op amp. I did not see any other IC, so this looks to be a purely analog circuit. The AC supply is slightly below 29 volts, so the iron is probably running at 24 volts. Proceeding to the UK mains plug, which has the right dimensions and features, but is of the molded on type. The fuse compartment actually contains a fuse, which looks like a typical fuse used in UK plugs. A 13 amps fuse, no less. It is the highest fuse rating allowed, but really only useful for 2000 watt devices like space heaters. I have seen that sometimes fuses in molded plugs are not even wired in and pure decoration, but here everything is in order. The station doesn't work without a fuse installed in the plug. I don't think the wiring in the mains cable would handle 13 amps and anyway, I never trust UK fuses in mains power devices coming from overseas or eBay, so I decided to replace this with a more suitable UK board 3 amp fuse and the original is already discarded in the bin. At this stage I did a quick mini soldering project with the Kai Reeds to get a feel how to use it in practice with SMD stuff, through hole stuff using a different tip and large solder joints soldered for mechanical as well as electrical connectivity. On this the Kai Reeds struggled at 350 degrees Celsius and I had to increase the temperature to 400 but then it worked okay. I may release a video of this project separately as this one is getting too long already. But I want to finish by fixing some of the questionable wiring in the station to improve electrical safety. First on the agenda is to swap hot to neutral. The easiest way to separate the live wire from the transformer is with snips and to desolder the neutral wire from the switch and fuse PCB. Note that all soldering in this part of the video is done by the Hakko since the Kai reeds has to be disconnected from the mains obviously. It turns out that the hot wire is too short to reach all the way to the switch and fuse PCB. So I have to loosen the strain relief and push the mains cable about 1.5 cm further in. There's plenty of cable so no problem. With that soldering the hot wire to the PCB where the neutral used to be is no problem. The yellow transformer wire is solid. So I first wrap the flexible neutral wire around it, solder them together and put heat shrink tubing over the whole joint. For ground, the first thing to do is move the connection to the corner where the additional plank metal is installed and secondly to add a tooth washer to improve the electrical contact. I also added an extra ground lead for the front panel. The other connection that passes through the ground to the soldering iron also gets a toothed washer to improve contact. I installed a 4mm banana socket on the front panel for one to be able to put a ground lead onto the metal front panel and secondly such a socket can be handy to connect for example a wristband when handling ESD components. Continuity between the transformer body and the front plate is as it should be and the new 4mm socket looks not too bad either. I took it apart again and even temporarily desoldered the AC connection to the PCB. 
This is so I can do an isolation test between the primary and secondary side of the mains transformer without risking damage to the PCB. I'm applying the high voltage directly between the shortened live and neutral of the mains plug and the shortened AC wires on the secondary. 250 volts, here it goes. This means no leakage at this voltage. Let's go to 500. No problem here as well. Will it handle 1000 volts between primary and secondary? Yes, everything fine, no worries here. I contacted Kaiweeds with my findings and to their credit they responded immediately. Soldering stations is a new line of products for them and they immediately talked to production to fix the wiring issues. They also stepped up the quality control. My thoughts on the Kaiweeds 936? It's a competent soldering station in itself for both SMD and soldering stuff needing a bit more grunt. Whether you like a helping hand arrangement is personal taste and you can easily rearrange things. The station I got has some quality problems but Kaiweeds is onto it and I believe they are sincere. None of what I found is an immediate safety concern, they are safety improvements. My general recommendation on any mains powered product you buy from less known manufacturers it is good practice to check that ground, hot and neutral are wired correctly. The rules differ from country to country. For example in Germany and most mainland Europe, swapping hot and neutral wires would be no issue since the mains plugs are not polarized anyway. If you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe. There are more projects, repairs and reviews coming up and it would be great if you decided becoming a Patreon. That would really help this channel. Thanks for watching.